Well, hi guys and gals, it's me George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man. And one of my subscribers, a young man by the name of Mason Fox, he and I were uh, texting back and forth and he was asking about the shift knob on the Goofy Cart. This is the knob that I did have on it, but now that we, and actually when this was on it was a 5 speed, but it was closest thing I had. I decided now that I'm down to three speed, I was going to put something more simple on it. So I put this knob that I had. But then he said, you know what would be cool on the Goofy Cart? It would be cool if you put an eight ball for a shift knob. Well, I'm not going to put an eight ball on it, but I'm going to go one better. This is a cue ball. And let me zoom down in here. Can you see that? Scott's in Florida. That's one of my longtime subscribers. And you see the eyelet on the top. He actually put that eyelet on it. And he also has it initialed on the bottom side. And uh, This hung over my Shade Tree Railroad layout in Minnesota for several years and I had it hung up and uh, to replicate the moon don't you know well I don't have the layout anymore but I brought the cue ball with me and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this out and I'm going to tap it and we're going to use this for a shift knob on the goofy car so hold on to your hat because here we go now one thing I wanted to show you, which you're already seeing, is these nice soft jaws that I got. They're plastic, and it makes it good for holding on to things. They're magnetic, so you can just take them off and put them away anytime you need to. So I'm going to get a pair of pliers. I'm going to screw this out. I'm going to redrill it, and then I'm going to tap it to match the thread on the shaft on the shift. And it is 3 8 24. And I'm cleaning up the threads on here because they've been they've been messed up for a while. And the other shift knobs that went on were plastic, so they kind of just went down over there, no problem. And I also want to take the threads down further than what they are now. And I can report while I'm doing this that I you uh, I could show you that I no longer am wearing the arm restraint. Uh, I do have limitations on me still. They took the staples out the other day. And their nurse practitioner said that I can now lift 25 pounds with my left arm, which was on a limit of 10 pounds before. And another good thing was, I, t I think I told you all that I wanted to, um, I told the doctor, actually the doctor that did the anesthesia, I told him that I wanted a high performance uh, heart pacemaker. And I said I wanted chrome plated and flame paint job, dual exhaust, headers and all that good stuff. And he kind of chuckled. And, uh, well, when I was there getting my staples out, the nurse told me that they upgraded my replacement time. Normally, it's seven years, and they don't, that's because that's what they figure the life expectancy is of the battery, and it's not that, uh, not that they replace just the battery, they replace the whole unit. But she said, they've upgraded yours, and you don't have to go back for a replacement for eight and a half years. Uh, I'm doing this on the back side. I gotta, I gotta change my cutter around so it's not trying to push itself out, because uh, if you know anything about taps, 
you know that they are threaded with a, a direct taper in there so that this side here um, has extra threads on it and it tapers in so that it can cut in while well, I'm flipping it over because I want to take these threads all the way down I'll see if I can get this to start again because the end of this is a little bit messed up but I got it on there going the right way Come on now, if I have to, I'll take my grinder to it and taper the end of that shaft because I want to run the threads all the way down. I think we got it. Yep, we got it. There we go. And now if I, by flipping over my tap, or my die actually, this is not the tap, this is the die tap is what you go into the hole this is what goes over the bolt or rod or whatever it is you're tapping uh, so the die I can by flipping over the die I can go all the way down to the bottom just about it won't cut as easily because it's not tapered on the back side uh, And one of the restrictions that I still have is that I can't raise my elbow above my shoulder. And I have inadvertently done it a couple of times, and that's not good. And it hurt afterwards. And the main reason for not being able to lift your arm up that high at the moment is they're waiting for complete healing. And while all I have is Steri strips now, and don't have uh, staples in there anymore um, until it's fully healed they don't want to take a chance of pulling the wires out because uh, you know I'm a bionic guy with a pacemaker they put in the the unit it's about the size of a pocket watch from what I can feel and it has two wires that come out of it and they thread them down through a couple of veins or vessels of some kind and into your heart and they don't want you pulling them puppies out of there all right then i'm going to get a fine thread nut and make sure it's going to work i do quite a bit of hunting to find this fine thread nut i normally use coarse thread but this is a fine thread nut We'll see come on now go on there it's going on crooked I think I'm gonna to have to grind the top of that shaft there we go finally and it goes on there just fine and dandy look at that all the way down and it even fits down pretty tight there you can see how crooked the top of this thing is. Yeah, it's pretty crooked. See that? <laughs> Excuse me! Let's see how crooked that thing is. Right, we'll make it work. So now we got to find the appropriate size drill to drill out our cue ball. And then we got to tap that. Okay, so now we've got to figure out the tap size. And here is... I can read it 3816 we're doing 3824 and you go across and it's a zero which is 30 332 thousandths that's the decimal but it gives you a zero 
Okay, so we come over here to my handy dandy drill index, and there is a zero right there. And we're going to make sure that we have it right. We'll look here again. 3 8 24. Oh, that's not a zero, that's a Q. Glad I held it in close. I couldn't see it that good. So we still have a Q, which is a little bit bigger, right over here. So that's what we're going to pull out. We're going to use that one to drill out our cue ball. So hold on to your hats while I get my drill set up. Okay, I'm going to drill. Follow the pilot that Scott put in. Gotta go some more. I always thought these things were like porcelain, but it's more like it's uh, some kind of a resin that these are made out of. At least this one. And I think that's deep enough. It chipped it a little bit around the, the edge, but you know, we're not going to see that once the shift knob, which this is now, is put into place. So now, let me get my tap out and we'll start tapping that puppy. Okay, so now we have our 3 8 24 tap in the tap holder. Put the handle in here. And we're going to start tapping. And we're going to put any oil on this because it's more, like I said, it's a resin. It's not steel. But you still have to use the same process. I need to tighten up my jaw a little bit more here. Or you have to turn it in. And then you have to turn it back to clean it. Whoa! I didn't have it down in far enough. It's pushing it right up out the top. Let me get it down in there a little bit lower. This is actually only the second time I've used these soft jaws. Now I'm going to take my bar out and we're going to use a handy dandy vintage ratchet wrench. This is a J, BJ, BJ, uh, well, no, the B probably is something else. The J.H. Williams and Company, USA. And it's called a super ratchet, patent pending. This is a vintage ratchet, don't you know? But listen to that. Huh? Instead of swinging the thing back and forth, I can just ratchet it. Well, it's not a rubber grippy thing, that's for sure these soft jaws. You put a piece of rubber over the edge, I guess. And I'll finish threading this and I'll bring you back and we'll see what it looks like when we thread it on to our shift. I think we're at the bottom.
Now I can just take it right out of the vise. We can unscrew that thing right off of there. Look at all that dust. <laughs> See the threads down in there? And on top, it says Scott's in Florida. Gotta tell you, I'm not really impressed with those magnets on there. All right, I'm gonna swing you right around. Don't get sick. Don't get sick. And I'm gonna bring you right over here, right up close. And let's see how this works out. It's threading right down on there. I think I think I might be putting some thread lock on. You can tell I didn't get it in there perfectly straight. Woohoo! What do we think about them things? Let me take you around from the front. Yeah, shifting with Scott. There it is in all its glory. Yeehaw! Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, thumbs up, sharing, all them good things. Until next time, this is George, the Shade Tree Fix It Man. Bye for now.